adventure. We love it. With being cooped up for almost a year now, needless to say, we were very eager to get out and explore. Our adventures this time flew us five hours over the border into the tropical ancient city of Tulum, Mexico. Once we landed in Cozumel, we hopped into our rental car and began our two hour journey to Tulum. Upon arriving, we were greeted with beautiful white sand and dense jungle. We decided to get the full experience, bugs and all, by staying in a bungalow in the jungle. Once we unpacked and rested, it was time for some exploring. Getting to explore the ancient ruins of Chichen Itza was truly amazing. Getting to marvel at these massive structures and wonder who might have stood in this exact spot thousands of years ago. After exploring Chichen Itza for a couple of hours, we found a local cenote and got to swim in some of the most beautiful fresh water we've ever seen. For our second adventure, we loved Chichen so much that we had to get back out there and explore the Cobra Ruins. Right, guys we have made it prepared to have your minds blown this is gonna be so cool so here's like the little map thing and uh, yeah we're gonna show you guys everything these are a little more unpreserved which really gives it that lost jungle city feel which I personally love you're allowed to explore these a little more in depth and if you go early enough there's actually no one there and it's really nice to be able to explore these things with no one else around <music> Shortly after arriving and seeing the first few ruins, we rented a bike and that started our two hour journey through the ruins. Koba actually has the largest ruin in the Yucatan, which was absolutely insane to see. What do you think? This is actually 
Unbelievable. This is really crazy. People built this with no machines. I and don't like, understand. Who do you think like stood where we're standing right now, you know? That's the craziest part to me. Like ancient people stood here and built this. Like this is just so mind blowing to me. Pretty cool. I urge you guys to get out there, adventure and explore because this is some of the coolest stuff that we have ever done. After finishing Koba, we couldn't contain ourselves. More cenotes. So if you guys know what cenotes are, what is it like? It's basically just like a massive watering hole. It's a natural water spring. It's insane. So it's deep underground. This one is a cave cenote. So I'm very excited for this. I'm gonna go ahead and hop on the GoPro. It's just a lot easier for me to film on the GoPro with this. It's gonna be all wet and stuff. So I'm so excited for this. We have to change, take a shower, get all the oils and stuff off of our body, and then we can hop into the natural water. So see you guys on the GoPro. Walk around now, just walk off. You just gotta, just walk off. Look up, up. You're looking down, up. Look up at the caves and the bats. Look up and just walk off. Just walk off. You got it, you got it, you got it. You did it, you did it. Oh my God. Look at how high that is. That is so high. You did the highest one. You did so good. Adrenaline. Yeah. Oh my God. All right guys, to end our day, we're at one of the restaurants in Tulum. It is absolutely insane. This is our last night here, so we're gonna treat ourselves. We got some really nice old fashioned. We have uh, surf and turf tacos for our appetizers, some really amazing bread. And we should show you guys what we get to eat tonight because it is going to be amazing. This is a super awesome restaurant here. We're downtown. Yeah, really, really cool. You ready for this? Delicious. Cheers. Happy birthday. Thanks. It's so good. It's, it's honestly unbelievable. The atmosphere, the setting, the bread. Unbelievable. Lobster tacos. This is actually insane. Volcanic salt on top of the steak. <laughs> this is... Amazing, what did you get? Look at this lobster right now. Ready for this? Wow. Oh my god. Absolutely incredible, guys. And we got sweet potato mash right here. Dinner is gonna be great. Boom. Oh my god. It is phenomenal. <laughs> All right guys, so like I said, before we head home, I'm gonna show you guys the bungalow and where we're staying, because this place is absolutely sick. So check it out, this is kind of like the, I guess like the free room area. These are other people's bungalows here as well. I don't know how many people are staying here, because it's been really quiet, but this is where we're staying. And then also a little pathway to the beach. It's super awesome, very, very close. So let's go ahead and check out the actual bungalow itself. This is the outside here and you come in, and this is literally all you have. You can give us a little tour of the bungalow here. So, <laughs> this is about it. <laughs> this is your Tulum Sanctuary. Yes. Yeah, so this is literally all you get in your room is a bed. A bed, you get a little fridge and some shelves, but it's pretty, I mean, look up. Like, that's pretty cool. Yeah, you're in, the, pretty you're in the jungle, but thankfully it does have like a little AC unit. It has a couple of outlets to charge things. And then we go to the back. Let's check out the bathroom area. Here we go. Check this out. 
This is the bathroom and you are literally outside. You shower outside, you poop outside. This is just really freaking sick, guys. Also, when we got to Chichen Itza, I of course had to get something for the collection at the office and I decided on an actual wood carved Mayan calendar. I thought this thing was way too cool not to get, am I right? Check it out. This is pretty cool, I'm not gonna lie. Hand, Hand carved. carved. They're sitting there carving them, it's pretty crazy. It's pretty sick, so this is what we got and all of our stuff is now packed. We are gonna grab some breakfast. Oh yeah, and the wildlife here is absolutely insane. <laughs> You're gonna wake up at 6 a.m. no matter what because of how loud the birds are, but it's really cool. All right, we're gonna go get breakfast now and then we're gonna hop back on the plane and head home. I'll see you guys when we get to the house. This isn't even, is it? No. All right, guys, we have finally made it home from our trip and it was honestly pretty freaking amazing, but it feels good to be home. I don't know if you guys can notice, but uh, our walls are painted or they're getting painted. I don't wanna show you guys yet. I'm gonna wait until everything's actually painted because it looks incredible. We can actually like hang stuff on the wall now. Finally. So yeah, they were working on it while we were on our trip and they almost have the entire downstairs done and then and, and then they're gonna move to the upstairs, which is gonna be really cool. But like I said, um, I wanted to do kind of a travel Q and A for you guys. Um, since a lot of you always have questions about where we go and like how we find the places that we find and stuff like that. I wanted to finish this video off with like just a complete q and I thought that'd be pretty cool, right? I don't think we've ever done like a travel Q&A, but one of me and Tiana's favorite things to do is travel and go camping and stuff like that. Every time you guys have questions for us. So we're gonna go ahead and answer a bunch of those. We have so many. I knew this was gonna be um, something that you guys were really interested in. So let's just go ahead and get started. Tiana always picks out the questions, uh, so she's gonna be the, the questionnaire. Here. There's a lot of good ones in there. I'm excited. What's the next bucket list travel destination? Egypt. We're going to Egypt. Oh we 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 planned it. We well, haven't planned it, but like for my birthday. No, you have said you wanted to go. That's as far <laughs> as we've gotten in the planning. Uh no, but I I'm I don't know. My one of my dream destinations has always been Egypt. I mean, I think I've always talked to you about always. Like, he Egyptian always... like mythology mm -hmm. and the te are the uh, the pyramids and the Sphinx and all of that stuff like it's just his thing. I don't know. Dustin's like super into it. Yeah, so for my birthday next year, I really want to do an Egypt trip, but it's like 20 something hours away and it's like a it's whole thing. It's going to take hard. us a long time to plan it, but it's going to be sick and I'm going to film the whole thing. It's going to be awesome. So if anyone has suggestions though, if you've yes. been, if you know like the best, I don't know, places to stay, um, or if you tours, live there, or if, yeah, if you live there, literally anything, please let us know because we're starting from like ground zero yeah. on this one. And I don't know anyone that's gone. So I can't really ask anyone for yeah. like references. We're super down. How do you think those pyramids were built? <laughs> the temples, uh, I, I mean, aliens. <laughs> <laughs> I knew he was gonna say that. <laughs> Uh, I, honestly, uh, we'll never know. There will be a n well. Never... That's why it's one of the seven wonders of the world yeah. because it's you'll never crazy. know. We'll never know. I mean, who, how they were able to figure out how to how to get like the stones that high and do it so and architecturally correct? Like it's insane. We'll never know. But it's it's really really. And cool. how they have it aligned with the sun, with the seasons, to know like when to plant and yeah. when to harvest it's wild so if you guys didn't know um but all the things that we did do while we were while we were in tulum we did the chichen itza ruins we did the coba ruins uh we did a ton of cenotes we did a river tour and it was all really really cool but one of the highlights for us was definitely chichen itza which is which is one of the seven wonders of the world and it was just it was so so awesome yeah any hassles to get into tulum to get there it was very, very easy. There wasn't any like COVID testing required. Yeah. You did have to fill out this form 24 hours before your flight, but they never asked for it from us. So I still filled it out. You should always fill, fill it out and have more. it just in case. They never asked for it um, for getting there. Now getting back, you do have to have a negative COVID test no more than three days prior to your flight back to the US. And yeah. I thought, I was really nervous going there. Um, I had actually like been messaging back and forth with the hotel about finding a COVID test. I just thought it would be hard, but we got there and there are COVID tents everywhere. everywhere. Yeah, but make so, sure wherever you go that they obviously have or if, yes. like, the hotel can set it up for you. Yes, yeah, so it was super easy for us to find one. You could just walk up and do it. 
Um, and that was really the only requirement to get back to the U.S. was that you have a negative COVID. Yeah, test. but I feel like there's so much more security in the airports getting to the U.S. as well, though. There definitely is a lot. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot bigger pain in the butt than it is to like get out. At least for yes. for Mexico. Yes. Ooh, if you had to choose one car to travel the world in, what would it be and why? The GTR, the, the 34. <laughs> uh, but hint, we may be planning something along the lines of that Exciting. in the 34. Exciting. It's going to be sick. Favorite part about traveling? It's getting to see all of the, or like getting to experience all of the new cultures and see people living in a different way. I mean, I think one of the coolest things about us traveling to like Thailand and to uh, Mexico and all these different places is seeing how people live so much differently than us and I think it's also getting to see like the less fortunate with people who have so little but are also so happy with what you have and I think it teaches us at least a lot of life lessons in and being thankful for for what you have because I mean we went to a town with less than 500 people that had electricity for only what like four hours of the day and yeah, they shut off at a hours. certain time and it and it shows because I mean like we saw kids running around having fun with rocks on the ground, you know, and it's just it, it makes us very humbled and shows us just to be thankful for what we have and getting to see all these different cultures and all these different people and um, in different areas of the world. It's just absolutely mind blowing. So I think that's my favorite part is going to like these different places and just seeing how people live and how it's different from us. I think it really just shows us and tells us to be thankful for what we have. Um, where did you leave Sparkle while you were away? <sighs> A couple people have asked that. Um, so we took him to my mom's house. Sparkle. He is not old enough to be like boarded yet. Um, cause he doesn't have all of his shots just yet. So yeah, we took him to my mom's house. My mom has a chocolate lab and they're like best friends and they just play the whole time and it's great. Sparko just loves everybody he loves, and every dog. Yes. It's insane, which is really good. One to 10, how amazing was Tulum? I think I would give it like a, like a seven. Yeah? I would give it like a seven. It was, it was seriously amazing, but the only thing about it was it was a giant tourist trap. Yeah, it, like downtown Tulum is a giant, so you have to like know to the places to go, the places to eat where it's yeah. not stupid expensive, yeah. like things Tiana like and that. I, when we do travel, we try and go to kind of like remote locations that is not very touristy, that has more of like locals and kind yeah. of the actual, um, the actual scenery of, you know, where we go. Like in Thailand, we stayed yes. at a bunch of different places that were really, really deep in and I think Tulum we expected that but look come to find out it was it was more I I did not know I didn't think there were going to be that many people I didn't think it was going to be that like expensive once you got there just yeah. like you know little knickknacks or or food or anything like yeah, that Yeah, but and I'm sure there are places within Tulum that aren't like yes. that and like a lot of the cenotes were very uh more geared towards the tourist, you know, it's, it wasn't as deep into the jungle as I thought. You right, know? right. I'm sure, and I'm sure there are, there are more like that, obviously. Um, but I think overall, it's it's an amazing place, and if you have the opportunity to go, you should definitely go. But on the scale of one to ten, I think I think about a seven. It's it's very very adventurous, very very fun, but also you're gonna spend a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. Um, how do you do, how do you save money for trips? I think this is a really good mm -hmm. question because we try to do one like big one a year, like Thailand or Japan or something like that. Um, this, you know, past year, it's a little different with not all the countries being open. So we try to do one big trip a year. And I think one really good thing to like save money is, and we actually like did this for the wedding too, was I got a big jar and like every month put X amount of dollars into it. And I mean, take the physical money out of your <laughs> bank account because when it's in there, that means you're spending it and you're not saving it. So yeah. take the physical money out, say you wanna save a hundred bucks every month and put the hundred dollars in the jar. So you don't have to worry about watching it, you know, on your bank account. Um, that's like my biggest tip. That's yeah, what we did for like, the wedding too. It's just easier. Yeah, or like when you sell something, you know, instead of putting the cash yes. in your bank account, go ahead and put that extra cash into a jar, something like that. Yes. So that's, that's what we do. Exactly. How was the hotel? Was it all ex all inclusive, they meant? Inclusive, not exclusive. So going, going back to um, like staying in places that are more remote, uh, that's what me and Tiana go for. So a lot of the places and a lot of the times we don't stay in somewhere that's 
um, all-inclusive. So for this one, it was not all-inclusive. We literally had a bungalow and that's all you got. I mean, we had an outdoor uh, bathroom, shower, all that stuff, but thankfully they still did have a front desk just in case like we absolutely had an emergency or mm -hmm. something. They do have a front desk, but as far as like all-inclusive go, this place had nothing but trees and bungalows, so. Do but you, there's tons of places there that do have all-inclusive stuff. Yes. Um, do you set budgets every time you travel? That's a really good question. So yes and no. I, I'm i going to answer this one because <laughs> I plan everything, you guys. I see Dustin starting to talk, and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> okay, so for yes and no, um, I try to find like the most reasonable hotels, and mostly because when we travel, we're literally in the only only in the hotel to sleep. Hey bud, you saying hello? He's chewing a bone. So we're really only in the hotel to sleep. So we don't stay in these like five star resort. There's just no point. That's not what like we're there for. So I usually go cheap but safe on the hotel is a very reasonable price. Um, plane tickets were the same thing. Like we try and find kind of the best deals. And if something, you know, may t have a layover, but it's like, exceptionally cheaper will do that yeah for sure because all that extra money that you're saving goes to experiences that exactly you have. And, and that's yeah. what we want to spend our money on is the experience and the tours and same with like food we usually eat pretty cheap and we'll do like one nice dinner yeah one nice night that's really it other than that we even bring a lot of snacks or like places where we can go somewhere and make sandwiches and bring those for lunch like we try to eat pretty cheap yeah we're not we're not the ones to like i know we need to relax but we never actually relax on the vacations we're always doing something which is a lot of fun as well so um we try and save as much money for the trip for the experiences like going on if we want to do a tour like renting a car i think um i don't know if anybody asked this but renting a car when you go somewhere is I think one of like the most important things to be able to have these experiences and see these places. Especially that you... in places where Uber and Lyft are not a thing. Yeah. And like... to see, see things that you wouldn't normally see yes. um, without having a car. Cause I mean, if you're stuck in, in the area of your hotel, you don't really get to see that much. But we rented a car and we were able to drive, you know, an hour or two hours away to go see these things. It was really cool. Um, a couple of people are asking about how we work out on vacation or do we worry about getting workouts in and i think every trip is a little bit different so when we travel for and you know usually hotels have like a hotel gym or something mm -hmm. like that but when you go to these more remote locations like thailand when you know we did that or even tulum yeah it's just not as easy to find or figure out. Yeah, I mean, even when we're camping at, at Big Sur too. I mean, like, yeah, like I, I think it. Uh, that's your. I think we save on the exer or the working out in different ways. I mean, we do try to eat healthier when we're traveling. We don't go all out every single meal, and also like we love to hike and we love to be active either way. So I mean, we're burning so many calories mm -hmm. with all the things that we're doing that it kind of um, it kind of helps us with with not being uh, able to access a gym or something like that, or if we don't have time. I mean, we're, we're walking and you know being active so much out of the day that it kind of helps us out there. So, I mean, it doesn't stress me out when I'm traveling and I can't lift. Um, I think that if it's a super long trip, like when I go to Japan for two weeks, you know, I'll obviously try and find a gym there. But if we're gone for, for five days or something yeah, like that, I we mean, just... we do so much and we, we really enjoy the experience. I, I think that um, I'm... Cons we're, we're so consistent with our working out and stuff already that taking that time off and really focusing on yourself and having those experiences is more important than rushing to the gym for an hour of your day. Yeah, agreed. A lot of people are asking like how we plan our traveling and like where to find cheap hotels and airline tickets. So I don't have a special system or use a special website or anything like that. I always try to book direct with the airline and direct with the hotel. I never try to do the hotel.com or whatever it is for the cheaper rates. Reason being, I know so many people, so many people that try to go through that and then they either, those third party websites and they either get to the hotel and they don't have a reservation or they need to change dates and you're not allowed to because of, you know, whatever the, the terms you agreed to. So. 
I always go direct with all of that because our life sometimes is so, we have to move things around. So I just always want to be able to go directly with the hotel and never have any problems. So honestly, that's my biggest piece of advice. And usually most of those third-party websites, it looks like it's cheaper, kind of like a Spirit Airlines. It looks like it's cheaper, but there's fees on there's top so of all that. so many additives and Yes, fees. just like Spirit Airlines. It looks like it's cheaper, but really you don't get a purse and you don't get a carry-on bag, so then you have to pay for that, whereas you wouldn't have to with Delta or United, and then it's the same price. Yeah. So that's like one of my biggest like traveling tips is just book direct. It's a lot yeah, easier. Yeah, and also, I mean, a lot. Of, I'm sure the questions are as well, like how do we find the experiences when we oh. go to these places and I think we honestly we do a lot of research Tiana does a lot of research beforehand but that only gets us so far I think a lot of the experiences that we get come from when we're actually there and we talk to people the biggest thing is is talking to people maybe it's whether it's at the front desk or we find somebody that's local there and mm -hmm. asking them like hey like what are the things to do while we're here and that's when we kind of decide I think um the internet's a, a good resource, but a lot of like the secret things, a lot of the harder to find things come from people that are actually there. Yes, agreed. Ooh, this is such a good question. Would you rather explore space or the deepest part of the ocean? Oh my God. That's a hard one because you like both. <sighs> That's hard, huh? Okay, my dream, this is, I've told Tiana this m many times. My dream as a kid, and this is so funny because I have so many books in my room, in my childhood room of like space and water. But my, my dream was become a marine biologist, be the best marine biologist in the world so that when space exploration happened, they'd come to me to figure out the, the water situation on the planet. I'd be the one to go to space. This is so elaborate. <laughs> I'd be the one to go to space and do the test for microbes and bacteria in the water. That's what I wanted more than anything. So I, I can't even answer that question. I can't even answer it, which, because they're both, so, I think we know more about the surface of the moon than we know about the deepest part of the ocean. I think we do. So that's actually like, that's insane. But I don't know because I love to go to space. I want to be on another planet. So it's both, I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> okay, a couple of people are asking like things that you find necessary to carry on your trips. And I think that's a really good that's question. That's a very good question. So I always bring Advil, Dramamine, <laughs> you never know, Tums, Tums, we you are guys. Wrecked. We are when wrecked. you go to different countries, it's you're just not used to, even if it's not bad food, you're just not used to whether it's the spice that they're using or where they're getting the food from. It's not even that. It's, it's the, different. When they raise their animals, like their chickens and their cows, they give them different food and they give them different whether it's like steroids to help them grow, whatever, it's different than in the US. So no matter what, even if you're eating healthy chicken and that's like, it's just raised differently. Right, so always, I always bring like those three medicine things. Mm -hmm. um, and I always just, I don't know, I always have this little satchel thing with like a pen, um, chapstick. Pens for sure. Bring it's, you never pens. realize when you're traveling and have to fill out all these different custom forms that you need pens. Um, and then hand sanitizer, Journal, write things down. Yes. When you, when you phone charger, yes. you'd be surprised how many times you forget a phone charger. Even if you're not a photographer or a videographer, I always recommend carrying a GoPro. GoPro is like a necessity. I may have dropped mine in the bottom of oh Snow Day, but our tour guide is a free diver and he dove to the bottom of the Cenote and grabbed my GoPro wild. and saved it. Insane. Wild. It was so this is cool. the coolest part about traveling too, this is the stories yeah. that like we come back with and the things that we remember and um, I don't know, I feel like it's there's a lot of life lessons in traveling. Whether Absolutely. it's patience because your flight got delayed or what literally whatever it is. I used to have zero patience at all and now that we have traveled so much I just have learned that it is what it is and you've gotta sit there either way. So just deal with it. Yeah. So I think a lot of people that when we travel we see that don't understand that traveling takes a lot of patience and they get mad and it's like you're gonna sit here either way, whether you're mad or you're not. So, so you might as well have a good time. Oh, time to edit. Oh. All right, guys, that is gonna be it for the Q and A. I hope that answered a lot of your questions. Um, we had a couple. We have a couple of questions about an overland build. 
very excited, very excited. <laughs> but get ready for a full week of Evo videos. A lot of the parts are already rolling in and we're gonna get started with that and finishing up a lot of stuff. The Z winner has been picked and we're gonna be announcing that very soon. So stay tuned and stay tuned to your, uh, your email inboxes and your phone because we will be contacting you pretty soon. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you guys have any more questions or want to have any suggestions on where we should go, leave them in the comments for me. If you haven't already, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. We will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.